The Republican Party thought that it would be smart to calm the American people by turning down the temperature of political rhetoric. They wanted everyone to know that their plan consisted of a simple message. Unity. We gotta turn the rhetoric down. We gotta turn the temperature down in this country. I think a lot of people probably rewrote their speeches after this happened to tone them down just a little bit and and not be quite as uh, you know quite as de decisive or divisive as as maybe they had been before. So let's turn this moment into a moment that helps us down that path of healing and unity. And the rhetoric, you know, uh, that it targets uh, each side, it needs to stop. It, it needs to stop. We got to get our country back on track. We got to create some unity. Well, I never thought I would see the day, but Republicans finally did the... What's that? They went back on their word? Of course they did. The left is godless, and I don't feel like it's harsh to say that. Today's Democrat agenda, their policies, are a clear and present danger to America. And then the Democrats flooded this country with millions of illegal aliens. Biden and Harris want illegals to vote. They promised normalcy and gave us Transgender Visibility Day on Easter Sunday. I mean, they're openly Marxist, for goodness sakes. They, they want to destroy everything we have in our country. They hate our God, they hate our country, they hate our military. Well, that promise of unity lasted all of five minutes. There's more. The left doesn't care about empowering women. You guys up there in the fake news have worn out your welcome. Biden has welcomed into our country rapists, murderers, even terrorists. Their regulations aren't just burdensome. Often, they include racist DEI requirements. My friends, we're watching the principles of faith, family, and freedom that once defined our na nation now being trampled underfoot by the radical left. The left is in retreat. Freedom reigns supreme. The woke mind virus is dead. The GOP will never be the party of unity, unless, of course, that unity involves dictators and fascism. There is a huge difference between when MAGA calls for unity and when President Biden calls for unity. I know bipartisanship is hard, and unity is hard, but we can never stop trying. Because in moments like this one, the ones we just faced, where the American economy and the world economy is at risk of collapsing, there's no other way. No matter how tough our politics gets, we need to see each other, not as adversaries, but as fellow Americans. Treat each other with dignity and respect. To join forces as Americans to stop shouting, lower the temperature, and work together to pursue progress, secure prosperity, and keep the promise of America for everybody. As I've said in my inaugural address, without unity, there is no peace, only bitterness and fury. And we can never become that country. I can honestly say, I can honestly say to you tonight that I've never been more optimistic about America's future. We just need to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing we can't do when we do it together. Look, after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump and the media's obsession with President Biden's age, it was a guaranteed slam dunk if Republicans could just follow through with unity. Instead, they decided to turn the RNC into WrestleMania by literally bringing out Hulk Hogan. When they took a shot at my hero, and they tried to kill the next president of the United States, enough was enough. And I said, let trump -a -mania run wild, brother. Let trump -a -mania rule again. Let trump -a -mania make America great again. Republicans have single-handedly destroyed American politics. They've turned our country into an absolute joke and are now just trying to reenact scenes from idiocracy. <laughs> He always finds a way to win. And when he's back in our White House, America is going to start winning again. He's got a higher IQ than any man alive. He's going to fix everything. The price of food and gas and housing is out of control. And the only person who can clean this up is Donald Trump. He fix the problems with all the dead crap. He's going to make them grow again. He's going to win in November, and we're all going to be champions again when he wins. I give you my word. He's going to be the economy. Let 
Trumpomania run wild, brother. Let Trumpomania make America great again. <laughs> That's what I thought. Republicans at the convention claim to be constitutional conservatives and patriots, but then they cheer on this kind of mockery. No policies were ever discussed that actually put America first, just fascist Project 2025, bigotry, and boredom. Seriously, Donald Trump was caught sleeping on multiple occasions during the convention, even during his son Don Jr.'s speech. I think for the good of the country, Donald Trump should drop out of the race. Clearly he's too old and doesn't have the stamina to be president. Earlier, I talked about how Republicans tried and failed to spread this message of unity. Well, guess what? It should come as no surprise that it all started with Donald Trump. On his Twitter knockoff, Truth Social, Trump said, I want to extend my condolences to the victim and his family. And then he quickly shifted over to making it about himself. I was shot with the bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. All right, while we didn't know much at the time, we now have a clear picture of what happened. Trump's claim that the bullet ripped through his skin is a huge exaggeration. There was blood pouring everywhere, and yet, in a certain way, I felt very safe because I had God on my side. But if we take a look at this close-up photo of Donald Trump at the rally, there is no bullet hole, no missing part of his ear, and no, blood was not pouring out everywhere. I'm not downplaying the attempted assassination by a registered Republican. It happened, and political violence is never the answer. But we do need to acknowledge that Trump is exaggerating here with regards to his injury, all in an attempt to get the media and the country to feel sorry for him and humanize him. That was very apparent when he showed up to the RNC with what looked like a maxi pad taped to his ear. I'm not saying he has to have Evander Holyfield's ear, but when the bandage does come off and there is no noticeable damage, the conspiracies will run rampant. Like I said, the shooting was real. I just think that the injury is so small to the naked eye that the bandage is the only way to remind people that something happened. Anyway, right after this Truth Social post, he followed it up with another post saying, Unite America. While that's great to hear, it didn't last long before he made another post talking about his cases, defaming E. Jean Carroll again, and playing the victim. The Democrat Justice Department coordinated all of these political attacks, which are an election interference conspiracy against Joe Biden's political opponent, me. Let us come together to end all weaponization of our justice system and make America great again. Well, you gotta love that ultimatum. Donald Trump says we can't have unity unless we stop holding him accountable. And leave it to Trump to shit on the idea of unity by posting a meme comparing Trump getting shot at versus President Biden walking up the stairs of Air Force One. Trump just couldn't help himself. He had to act tough for MAGA because MAGA doesn't actually want unity. Biden is calling for unity. Is that possible? Is, is it a, an achievable? Should it be achieved? Can it be achieved at this point? He can take his unity and shove it up his ass. There is nothing I would like more than to just pull down the blinds on these crazy fascists. And speaking of blinds, I want to thank today's sponsor, Three Day Blinds. If you're anything like me, light sneaking through your window can seriously mess with your sleep. I used to have these blinds that would let in light at the crack of dawn and it was the worst. Luckily, that's no longer an issue for me and it doesn't have to be for you either. There's a better way to buy blinds and window treatments and it's called Three Day Blinds. They are the leading manufacturer of custom window treatments in the US and right now they are running a buy one, get one 50% off deal. We can shop for almost anything at home, so why not shop for blinds at home too? Three Day Blinds has local professionally trained design consultants who have an average of 10 plus years of experience that provide expert guidance on the right blinds for you in the comfort of your home. Just set up an appointment and you'll get a free, no obligation quote the same day. Not very handy? Not to worry. The expert team at 3 Day Blinds handles all of the heavy lifting. They design, measure, and install so you can sit back, relax, and leave it to the pros. 3 Day Blinds has been in business for over 45 years and you may not hear it in the name, but they make an incredibly high quality product. That's why they are the highest rated blinds company on Trustpilot at 4.7 out of five stars. When it comes to home renovations, we all have questions. I know I do. What blind should I get to cover arched windows? Is it time to upgrade to motorized blinds? What blinds are better? Roller shades or Roman shades? No matter your unique need, from motorization to home automation to room darkening to child safety, with 3 Day Blinds, you choose from thousands of 
options that fit any budget or style, and with actual samples, you won't be guessing about what your blinds will look like. Right now, you can get three-day blinds, buy one, get one, 50% off deal on custom blinds, shades, shutters, and drapery. For a free, no charge, no obligation consultation, just head to 3dayblinds.com slash Gabe. That's buy one, get one, 50% off when you head to 3dayblinds.com slash Gabe. One last time, that's number 3dayblinds.com slash Gabe. Just look at how alleged sex trafficker Matt Gates gets in the face of cowardly Kevin McCarthy on the convention floor. You get booed off, so that's the way they you would know. get booed so off the stage. That's, that's the biggest challenge we have. He said you were to get booed off the stage. <laughs> What's your response to him? Well, it, you know, he looks very unhinged. I mean, a lot of people have concerns about him. And I'm not sure if he was on something, but I do hope he gets the help that he needs. But more importantly, I hope the young women get the justice they deserve when it comes to him. I mean, you're referring to the House Ethics Committee investigation that is ongoing. Yeah, with, with his partner in jail because they paid underage women for sex and drugs. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to. So he, he has denied all of that. I'm wondering, doesn't he deserve the presumption of innocence? sense here? Well, people are in jail. The women have confirmed it. Um, he came to me. If I sort of still wanted to be speaker, I could have done something illegal and stopped the ethics committee investigation that started four years before. He told you to stop the ethics yeah, committee? That, that's what the that's what the whole motion to vacate was about. He, he wanted me to engage and thought somehow I started this investigation. It started long before I was ever speaker. I, and as you know, as Congress, I don't get involved in ethics. It's an equal number. They could investigate me. It's, it's, it has to be in its own arm and branch. And so he wanted to leverage me to try to do that. And if I didn't, he wanted to do a motion to vacate. And he, he's denied that, of course, that he urged you to stop the investigation. No, I had other members come to me. He came to me. I had other people who were on yeah, TV that he talked to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So no, there's no denying it. And if you thought that was bad, MAGA just discovered that J.D. Vance has an Indian wife, or as they call her, a brown, and they are not happy. But it is a value that you you marry someone that's uh, like you. You marry someone that's like you. You marry someone that's like the kind of people that you grew up with and like your parents. And you marry a Christian. What kind of man marries somebody that isn't a Christian? What kind of man marries somebody named Usha? Clearly, he doesn't value his racial identity, his heritage. Clearly, he doesn't value his religion. He doesn't marry a woman that professes Jesus Christ. What does that say about him? Usha, if you're watching this, you in danger, girl. At the start of the convention, Trump gave an interview with the Washington Examiner where he said that he wanted to take advantage of a historic moment and draw the country together. The speech I was going to give on Thursday was going to be a humdinger, Trump said. Had this not happened, this would have been one of the most incredible speeches, aimed mostly at the policies of President Joe Biden. Honestly, it's going to be a whole different speech now. If it's not already apparent, Donald Trump is not a changed man. He's just a guy with an even bigger God complex after surviving an assassination attempt. But that didn't stop his campaign and those close to him from letting everyone know that Trump was different, that he changed his speech, and that he was not even gonna mention Biden once. Donald Trump's acceptance speech, his promised message of unity before prime time. Crazy Nancy Pelosi, the whole thing, just boom, boom, boom. He's not gonna mention Biden. Biden's not going to be mentioned. There's no need to mention it. Biden has done. Biden. President Trump tore up the speech that he had and said, I need to redo this. It has to have a different tone. I have to lay out the pathway forward, how we unite the country. And give us your vote. I am trying to buy your vote. Ripped up his speech to focus more on unity. The late, great Hannibal Lecter. President Trump's speech will be focused on unity. The United Auto Workers ought to be ashamed. And the sad part is the media bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Scott Jennings tweeted, I've seen a big chunk of Trump's speech. Folks, buckle up because he's about to blow the doors off and rise to the occasion. Well, guess what? It had quite the opposite effect with many of his supporters falling asleep. I mean, this might be the worst acceptance speech of all time. The damage that this administration has done, and I say it often, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States, think of it, the 10 worst, added them up, they will not have done the damage that Biden has done. Trump had a very simple task. Stay on track, talk about uniting the country, and don't mention President Biden. But instead, he rambled for 92 minutes, 
called Nancy Pelosi crazy, attacked Biden, and then kissed the uniform of Cory Kemper Tor, the Butler rally victim. It was very cringe. There's no other way to put it. Trump fumbled the bag so hard that Biden now has to send him a thank you card for the bump in the polls. Despite how much Donald Trump and others claim, he is not a changed man and he never will change. Trump only cares about himself. I mean, just look at how Trump acknowledges, or rather, doesn't acknowledge his daughter, Tiffany. Donald Trump is a malignant narcissist who is hell-bent on becoming a dictator to implement the fascist Project 2025 and get revenge on everyone who tried to hold him accountable. Abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. They know when he comes back, it's game over. Day one dictator. It, 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 hey, right. day one dictator. Hey, how many people here? Now, normally I know you probably wouldn't in America, but considering what they've done to this man, how many people here support day one dictator? And now he's using the RNC in the recent shooting to manipulate the media to receive more flattering commentary. For example, political reporter Natalie Allison said, there appears to be a new softness to Donald Trump with people who've talked to him describing him with words like existential, serene, emotional, and even spiritual. The mainstream media is so desperate to sell papers and views that they keep falling for Trump's Hitler-esque tactics. In December 1924, the New York Times wrote, Adolf Hitler, once the demigod of the reactionary extremist, was released from imprisonment at Fortress Landsberg, Bavaria today, and immediately left in an auto for Munich. He looked a much sadder and wiser man today than last spring when he, with Ludendorff and other radical extremists, appeared before a Munich court charged with a conspiracy to overthrow the government. His behavior during imprisonment convinced the authorities that, like his political organization, known as Volkischer, was no longer to be feared. It is believed he will retire to private life and return to Austria, the country of his birth. Yikes! <laughs> if the media keeps driving the news instead of reporting it, we're gonna find ourselves with another fascist dictator. That's why this November, we need to vote blue to protect our country and our democracy. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. What was that is made possible by viewers like you. And if you'd like to support the show and get early access, you can contribute to my Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Thank you for your support. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been, what was that? <laughs> <laughs>